Yellow fever. Scarlet fever. Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Disco fever. Gold fever. Jungle fever. Cat scratch fever. Cabin fever. Enough of this heated discussion. It's tomato time! Excuse me, but I have to beg your pardon. Something strange is growing in my garden. Tomato, tomato, tomato time, time for tomato. 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 Isn't this just a lovely park? Peaceful, tranquil. Place to come and meditate, kind of reflect. Reflect on the joys of the day, the joys of nature. I'm in the water! <laughs> Honey, it's time to go. Okay. Hi. I'm the executive producer of Tomato Time, Shane. The show's not called Tomato Time, Shane. I'm Shane, and the show's called Tomato Time. This is part of the cast back here, just talking amongst themselves, having a good time. Just like we do every Thursday night at Joshua Cup for the past year now. They're good people. They're really good people. There's beautiful women we have. They're really ugly men that we also have. But we all work together. No matter what, through thick and thin. And there are thick ones here. And there are thin ones here. But all in all, we're a team. We're a unit. <laughs> We're a source of infinite knowledge. People have been telling me that I've got the fingers to play. I think the fingers, though, need to be utilized in conjunction with a little bit of something I like to call knowledge. This is the extent of my knowledge. That's not something to build a career on. You know, sometimes I get discouraged because I'm told that the smartest people are those who had exposure to music lessons when they were young. If I'm a genius, what motivation do I have to learn anything more? You may be wondering, why does he want to play? Got a simple answer for you. I plan on proposing one day and Whoever that lucky lady is, I want to woo her with my melodies. What am I talking about? I'm only in this for the chicks. For now though, I'll stick with something I know.
would like to thank all of you who sent cards and letters, especially when Peyton uh, came down with TB. Mm -hmm. um, we appreciate the Snickers and the other various candy. And even though I'm allergic to chocolate, it's really the thought that counts. Well, good thing he ate it and stayed in the hospital even longer. Because what <laughs> happened? Right. More cards and letters. More cards and letters. <laughs> we, we love the love that we get from the Macon community, Macon Water Island, mm -hmm. Central Georgia. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of you are in Milledgeville. I think they call it Middle Georgia. Uh, Middle Georgia. Yeah. Um, it's the area in the center. You know, we've grown up here in Middle Georgia, <clears throat> the community. I guess I'm at what some psychologists call the age 30 transition. Of course, I'm 32, a little bit behind on that one. It's kind of like a midlife crisis, but not exactly, unless you're going to live to be about 60 or 65. It's a period of reassessment where you look back over the past 10, 15 years and you ask yourself, what have I accomplished? Have I accomplished anything? Yeah, over here I've got, uh, I've got my motorcycle helmet. But I don't have a motorcycle. I got a CD collection. I collect uh, vintage or antique Bible leaves. I'm 10 years out of college and I'm, I'm at a crossroads. Sometimes the easiest decision to make at the crossroad is to just stay there. Walk around in circles. That way you get to see all your options. Not really commit to anything. That's another Bible leaf uh, from the 1600s. Greek Septuagint. Um, this is what I call the ugly tree. It's a gift from my grandmother. So it's got sentimental value. No. I've been teaching school for 10 years now almost, and I, I just don't want to do it anymore. And here I am, the summer's coming up, and I'm going to get paid through the summer, but after that, I'm unemployed. Uh, I've got options. I've got an eBay business, but right now I don't have internet. I'm thinking televangelist. I kind of like to be a TV evangelist, yeah. So you're grown up now, you know, you're supposed to accomplish something and you're, you're asking yourself the same question, what do I want to be when I grow up? <laughs> Have I grown up yet? When will I grow up? What am I? Who am I? Where am I going? Why am I asking all these questions? I got a CDs I've been making for years, There's a few of them, recording them, producing them, all that. All original work. I've never really gotten around to distributing any of them. I guess it's avoiding failure by refusing to try. This is my state quarters collection. I would have it filled up all the way to California, but you know how gas prices are. And I can't get these out. What do you see happening with the next 30 years? Well, I hope I'm still alive. I'd like to get married at least once. Have a family or two. Maybe pick up a hobby. Smoking.
Red material months and months ago. With one lock of hair right here. And he's running right past you. And as you, and you only got one chance to grab that lock of hair. Well, what problem, why would you want? <laughs> Oh, is there like a prize? I got questions. I had questions for him, which you got to ask him years later when uh, I have to get in trouble when I ask him. Number one, what's his lock of hair? Is he a Harry Krishna? Yeah. Uh, number two, um, why, why does he have any name? <laughs> why does he have football practice? That's my question. That too. I mean, they usually don't love it. With 14 year olds. Okay, anyway. Well, the other question is why? Why is a naked man running towards me? <laughs> Do I have some kind of animal magnetism that as soon as you take off your pants, you're like, where's Jacob? <laughs> but, yeah, and I would have to ask, why am I going to want to get you? That's the yeah, that's fourth a, question. Uh, all right, did I get this? Why do you want to grab a naked man? Why, I'm Do I, the other I, don't, way, right? I don't think I want to grab a See, naked man, coach. Do I want to grab a naked man? Like, <laughs> grab a naked man and win a prize. <laughs> And then number five, he's naked. Is his hair the only animal that got him? could be a eunuch. There's a naked eunuch. I changed schools after that, and I talked to the coach there, and he was like, I have no idea what he was talking about. What I think he was talking about was Prometheus, which was this uh, messenger between the gods, and he'd run between the villages and stuff, and he had a horn on his forehead, and if you grabbed the horn, you'd have to prophesy over your life. And he didn't want him. He didn't want to prophesy. Prometheus. I knew a guy named Prometheus Brown. He was in seventh grade with me. He was like fifteen. Ha ha! Can't get a good night's sleep. You've tried everything. Taking off your shoes. Ah, oh, but that doesn't seem to help at all. And what about blankets? Do they really make things better? I don't think so. Not even when you use those fancy pillow things. Let's face it, you're not getting enough sleep. But now there's the Persona Bed 5000, using the latest in Swedish voice recognition technology. Oh. All right, that's good. Stupid television. What's on channel 18? Yes. All right, down. And you can stop right there. Go up again, I like that. Down. Whee! The Persona Bed 5000. Human beings hold separately. And here it is. The greatest advance in television since color television itself. When I was a kid growing up, there was a golden retriever in our neighborhood. His name was Infinity the Wonder Dog, coolest dog I ever met. He belonged to an older couple up the street, but all the neighborhood kids, well, we thought of him as our own. So we'd go play with him most every day. And he could do any trick. Sweet dog. He could tell he loved children, and we loved him too. One day he just disappeared, just ran off. Nobody knew why, nobody knew where. As time went on, we, we learned more information. All those years, as happy as he might have seemed, Infinity the Wonder Dog was a closet alcoholic. We tried to process this information and figure out why, why would a dog like Infinity be driven to drink? Some people felt it was the pressure of trying to live up to his name. I mean, Infinity is a pretty big name to live up to. I always thought that deep down in his heart, he knew that no matter how hard he tried, he'd always be a son of a